Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we have an exciting new start and we're going to be talking about something called cliché vert. Now it's a photographic process and in the process uh, you take um, a transparent piece of film. Now originally artists used uh, glass they didn't have plastic in those days. We're talking about the 1800s here. And uh, in this case, we're talking about a transparency. So that's what we're going to be working with. And what they did on glass was uh, they used pigments, let it dry, and then they turned it over and put it on, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a paper that had been treated with a photo process some chemical that would um, react with sunlight, so it's a dark room thing. Then they would expose it to light and that would create a negative image. And uh, then of course you go through the regular photo process, you know, with enlarger and, you know, developing chemicals and so forth. Anyway, we're uh, going to be adjusting that because obviously we're not going to be able to do a film in a dark room. Uh, I have done that in the past, but uh, I don't have the facilities here in my studio. Anyway, um, I just wanted to give your attention here to an artist named um, Eugene Delacroix. And uh, he was an 1800s artist, uh, just before the Impressionists. And uh, he did this on, uh, uh, by the way, cliche is plate and ver is glass. Um, he did this on glass, of course, and it's a wonderful drawing. So I think at the time they thought it might replace printmaking, but it never really got off the ground. So look at the fascinating line work here. Um, Josh might be able to close in on it. And um, you can just see how vicious this animal is with the expression on its face, even the, the way the tail is oriented and lots of beautiful line work. So we're not going to imitate the, that style, but we're going to be doing some brushwork and we're going to experiment with a couple of processes. Now, not sure how it's going to work. Well, we can but try, but uh, we're going to, I have some paper soaking. We're going to be doing, using our Createx colors. I have some black out already. And we're going to paint and then on this uh, transparency and then uh, we're going to let it dry and then I will we'll decide whether we print it on the gel plate or directly off this plate we'll call it a plate for now our image and this is another fascinating process that it took us forever to find this uh, it is in Photoshop, and what it does, it's like an x-ray. It uh, You uh, actually go from a negative or a positive to a negative image. And so, you know, naturally your trees are going to be dark. So when you re reverse that, the trees, everything that was white is black. So that's not bad for transfers. Unfortunately... <laughs> Uh, we have different printer ink now that doesn't seem to be working very well uh, with uh, doing a transfer. So we're going to do it in a more, um, well, I can't say old-fashioned because it's not old-fashioned, but a previous way. And in between, I think we might try, uh, I've just done it last night, usually when you do a photocopy and you want to transfer, you need to let it rest for a few days and then it seems to work better. But uh, being short of time, uh, I did put them in the freezer and we'll do it off camera. If it doesn't work, then you'll never know the difference. <laughs> if it does work, well, all to the good. I, I have one that um, did work, um, but it didn't work very well. It's, I don't know if you can even see this. It's an image of a fox. This is it with the ink on, uh, paint on top. And uh, 
It's a fox we photographed last year because it was on top of our wood pile. So that's not a bad transfer. I mean, we could work with that. But I didn't have any luck whatsoever with this one, which is why I even thought of this process to begin with. I thought if we reversed it and everything else was really dark, that maybe uh, my printing ink would behave and we could actually get a nice transfer out of it. Well, about uh, how many? <laughs> Josh, about five or six failures later. Uh -huh. And this happens. Um, I mean, there's other things you can do. You can double print it or triple print it. You can take it to a, a good laser copier place, um, you know, like Walmart or, or um, you know, some other places that you have in your area. And you might be able to get a print uh, with reasonable ink. I'm using a much cheaper ink. Uh, the HP printing inks now for black, I think, is about $250, which is way beyond my budget. So whatever, we carry on uh, in our own special way. So I'm going to put this underneath. And uh, we're just going to start painting. Now this is going to be a very rough painting. We're not so concerned about, um, and I might add a little bit of other color in here too, just to create a little more interest. That's one thing we have an advantage over is that we can add other colors. There we go. We have yellow. And maybe we'll just use the fuchsia. So we'll add a little bit of color as well. There. Red is being stubborn today. Okay. So then uh, I think I have a little bit of water here on the side. We'll wet our brush. So just to refresh you about Createx paint, it's a water-based paint. It works a bit like watercolor. Uh, it can be used on a, uh, like a gel plate. It can be used on a plexi plate if you let it dry. And then you need to wet your paper and once you, uh, and you know, get it to the point where it's just damp and you put it on, it will pick up all the paint. So now then, we're just going to start with black and mix a little red. So sort of a We'll make a sort of a sepia tone out of it. That should be really lovely. So I'm not going to go for any great detail. We're just going to sort of um, get the strokes down. I'm going to maybe just try and go around things like the trees. Maybe a few and then just all the rest we're just going to blot out. So Josh will put some music on this. It's going to take a few minutes. Now the nice thing about this brush, it has a very pointed tip. So I can go in and I can cut some branches out here and get quite close. And hopefully by the time I finish all the painting, uh, this first part will be dry.
and I'm totally ignoring uh, specific details. Just paint along the trunk here. Now, I don't know if we're going to get to the second part of this process today, but in the second part, we're going to be doing just a graphic uh, graphite or a charcoal transfer. Maybe a combination like I've done before. And uh, we will superimpose that over this area. And hopefully everything lines up. Now obviously you can take as much time as you want. I'm just rushing through it as usual. With this brush and uh, probably with a rigger, the lettering kind of brush, you can get some very fine details. And don't forget, we have that um, graphite uh, pencil that would be perfect for this because you can wet it and then draw into it. If I find that, maybe we'll do that too. We'll see. I want this to dry quite rapidly, so I'm not adding extra water to it. You can suggest uh, bushes just with line work here, brush marks. Using the side of your brush uh, is great for getting um, bush-like lines. Now because we are um, painting this directly, when we put it on the gel plate it's going to be in reverse, but when we print that on paper, it will go back, just so you're clear. Not that it really matters whether it's in reverse here or not. And we're just going to do some crazy brushwork on the side here. Put more darks there. A nice little tree in here. When we do the gel plate print, then all these light areas will get color or you can leave it however you want. So it's much more of an abstract than a realistic rendition here. 
So you can play with it all you want, you know, take out details, um, add stuff in if you like. It's a nice way to play with paint. I've gone over the edge here deliberately in a few places because I want to show you how easy it is to just wipe something away. Now that's almost dry, so we're going to be able to carry on very quickly. Now, just with a little, and you can see, we can just take it right off. So. So we have our image, and uh, this is a direct image, I haven't reversed it. So we're going to, now this is entirely experimental, I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm going to wet my plate down, and uh, we'll wipe it a little bit, so just so we don't have any. Puzzles and things on there. Now a really nice mister would be probably your best bet. But I just want to make sure this thing is wet. Just taking off the biggest bobs. And I think I might miss this from a distance, so. No, it's going to blob on me. Okay. I'm just going to lie in the very top up. And watch out for air bubbles. If some of it hasn't um, connected yet, we can spray again or add water with a brush. That might be more useful. Lots of those little bubbles. Now, it seems to me that the image is coming up pretty good. All right. <laughs> now, we still have a fair amount left on here, but that's okay. So I can see the tree. I think it's all good so far. All right, the first process done. So now we have to let this dry. Then uh, we pick it up uh, with our dampened paper. And then we go to step two with graphite. So, so far so good. <laughs> So I have my dampened paper. Uh, it's just uh, regular multi-purpose paper. It works pretty good. And we're putting it on the gel plate that had the Createx paint uh, dried on it. And we just let it sit for a second. And it should feel damp to the back of your hand. I had to spray this one. We had it sitting in the towel for a bit. Putting another paper down and rubbing the back. Or using our little barren. To make sure it picks it up. All right.
Okay, it's pretty good. Our middle tree, this is now um, the positive way. We haven't, we have sort of double reversed it. And here's our tree. Here's our image again. And you can see here on the side, I mean, I was very loose and free with my brush strokes, so you're not going to get a lot. But we have our central tree. We have this tree. Everything's in the right position. And here the side thing. So we've, we know we've done it right. Okay, so far so good. Now this needs to dry. And uh, our next process is we're going to do... Now is this the right size? I think we haven't... We've got a paper cut already with, and we're going to be drawing on it. Okay, so we'll be back in a flash and we're going to start on the drawing. So now we are at the point where we can actually redraw our little trees. I'm using my charcoal. I may resort to some graphite just for tone. Certainly you can draw it freehand. Um, I just think this tree is so interesting that, um, you know, taking the time to trace it might be worthwhile. We're not going to put a lot of detail in, it's just going to be the essence of it. And this time I'm going to take quite a bit of time. We'll speed it up for the camera. is a little bit like the bells that we did. A few episodes ago, if you want to check that out. Our wonderful ice bells. Now, Josh took this photograph. I have uh, one photograph, but it's not nearly as good because there were trees in the way. And Josh went down into a precipitous bank and a ditch to get this photograph so he suffered for this <laughs> I would have probably broken an ankle or something the things we do for our art this is an area um, this particular tree is in a field but the area itself had been logged um, many years ago. And this is one of the last remaining fir trees that are of um, fairly gigantic proportion. I have a picture of Josh uh, standing on a cut um, stump of a fir tree that's, he's not a short person, so, um, the stump really dwarfed him. <laughs> so that gives, you know, an idea of uh, the size of it. Maybe we'll post that picture of him. So that was maybe at the turn of the century where all those giant firs were cut. Still hauling quite a few large trees out of the area. Now that looks pretty nice. Um, Now, I don't know why this tree, I guess it was fairly bright, the sunlight was on it. But this one is dark. We won't spend as much time on it because uh, it's in the background and we don't want to take away from our image. Now this is the central image although the proportion isn't quite the center, which is good. Oh, 
most art lessons they tell you to avoid the center because that's where the eye tends to go to begin with and then misses out on everything else. So you want to put it, you know, not in a central position, whatever your central interest is. This will all be tone here in the background. And we'll put some of the little negative Okay, our next tree. I should have started on this end, I guess, but whatever. Um, now, the day we took this photograph, um, we still more or less had summer, and it wasn't, and that's why there's still so many leaves on the trees. But the leaves all got caught because uh, three or four days later it was about minus 10 and snowing like crazy. <laughs> Things can change here in the caribou quite rapidly. By having this large space here, um, it it does sort of give a bit of uh, power on that side and sort of leads you towards that middle section. So compositionally, it's pretty good. And having the trees reversed um, creates so much sort of uh, mystery. Now, of course, um, you wouldn't have to reverse it on the Photoshop, which is what we did, um, because all the trees are white. They're just still covered in snow. And it hasn't blown off in spite of a really fierce wind. It, I just, everything was, I guess, crystalline. Now I'm going to take a piece of paper so I don't smudge that. Look at these wonderful negative spaces in between the branches. I'm putting this on deli, no, not deli paper, um, oriental paper. I didn't put on tracing paper because then you'd see too much of the background and that would be confusing. Now, if, we're, if I were doing this for myself, I would do this initial tracing and then I'd have a look and see what I would eliminate and then uh, we draw it to my specifications. I'm not, I would probably move that tree over a little bit so it's not quite so central. And okay, so now I think we're just going to add some tone. And we're going to do that with the graphite because it'll go faster. Now there's sort of background trees here. And we're going to bring the dark right in around the, so it will really stand out. We'll get some detail uh, from a little bit from the um, previous transfer. And I'm just going to make up some spaces, things, some air holes, if you like.
and we'll cross hatch in the back here. I'm using my um, graphite pencil. It's all graphite. And this is a 9B. We're just going around the trees. Putting in some air holes, making it interesting. Here's where you can go, you know, just do your own thing. Which is always what art's about, isn't it? Translate what you're seeing to your way of working. Redo, um, eliminate, crop, overlap. All those things are good things to do. And also, um, think about the contour of what you're doing because here it's fairly flat. It uh, goes up a hill into the background. But you can put shadow tones in whatever you want. So the flat part goes back a little ways. And now we're just putting in tone. You can go right off the end if you want. Put in a few details in here. Just make them up. And do put a lot of darks around those white areas so that they stand out. Now when you finish, um, you know, you'll have quite a nice drawing as well. Be sure and do something with that. You might have to pump up, um, you know, the dark tones again because we have going to be transferring it. And I'm going to put lots of darks here at the base around the tree. We didn't really have shadows that day, did we, Josh? So we're just going to indicate maybe a darker area around the bases. Okay, add a few details in the trees. Shore up some of the branches. A few more sky holes and air holes. And then you can, you know, do maybe some bushes. There was one right in front of the tree, but you can move that over a bit. That may or may not transfer anyway. There were grasses and things there. I've put it into the photo program so that it looks like snow, actually. carried away with details here in the front because you don't want to take away from the trees so
Too many artists put too much stuff in. And then you wonder what the story is about. Is it about the cow or the barn or the whatever? <laughs> or is it just about the cow and her spot in the in the meadow? Less is more. Get your point across. So here's the drawing that we're going to transfer. I think it looks pretty good. At this point, uh, if we've missed any details, you can shore up a few things. Now onto the plate. So I've put the drawing, which was in charcoal and graphite, onto the gel plate in position. And we're just going to, you know, put some weight on here and just it uh, onto a clean gel plate. Wow, look at that. Even all the tone transferred. So you need, I think I've talked about this before, you need a, a good sturdy paper. Um, and the oriental paper works great because it's transparent and it's um, fairly um, heavy duty. And it has a little bit of tooth, but not as much as bond paper or some of the other uh, drawing papers. So it's one of the best. Now you have your choice. Uh, do you want to add color or leave this? Um, white is a really good release agent. And I would add the, the white dries almost immediately. So even though it's really good at picking it up, add a little bit of your matte medium and uh, maybe even a little retarder to it and not too much where you don't pick it up at all. So I have my Amsterdam white. It's nice and opaque. We don't need a lot. I'm going to add a little bit of um, the super matte medium. There we go. And I'm going to add we can't use that because that's the other paint. We have now have to stay with Amsterdam paint. Of course, Prussian blue is one of those colors that are very staining. Mix the medium and the white. And a hint, and I kid you not, look at how instantly it stains. Let me put a smidge on there. All these lovely artistic terms, smidges and fuzzles and stuff. Um, just drag a tiny little bit into it from the edge. That's the best way. Now keep it transparent. You just want to release that, that drawing that we have underneath here. And nothing should be covered up. Now we're going to get rid of this and we have our initial drawing and we have to flip it over. Okay, here we go, lining up. Okay. It's 
still a bit damp, so I'm just making sure that it's going to pick up that layer. We might have to wait for this one. I don't know if we need to add more matte medium. Possibly. Feels a little on the dry side, so. Yep. Not all of it's um, not sticking. But we want to get the entire image up, so. We've got the heater on like crazy because it's minus 20 some degrees, Josh. Minus 22. Minus 22. And so it's very dry in here. And we're getting some of the details, but it just dried almost instantly, even with the matte medium on there. But it's okay, it'll pick it up. Mm. Just have to be patient. Okay, so we'll say goodbye for now. We're going to reveal this later on. Uh, it probably needs a couple of hours to dry totally and pick up that last layer. So that was very exciting today. Uh, things worked out not too badly. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, always an adventure here at Shoreline Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate all the support. Um, we're going to keep going in the new year and hope to see you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't think we have a bell. If we had a bell, I guess you could ring it. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm not crazy about those things. But anyway, uh, it does help you to, to see that we've posted a video. But check us out every once in a while. And you, we usually post uh, once a week if we can. I think we're doing a lapse over the holidays. So we all need a break. So take care of yourself. Take care of your families, be in good health and good cheer, and be kind to one another. Bye for now. So we've taken off the work off the gel plate and here's the graphite uh, and uh, charcoal transfer. There's a few spots that didn't quite um, transfer but we did have to rush the process a bit, maybe another hour and that would have picked that up too. But I can work with that. So you can see the graphite and especially the tone in the background printed beautifully. Uh, look at the weeds in the front. That's awesome. And I think with that general's uh, charcoal that we can use, uh, you know, add a little bit of water to, that will take care of these spots. So it's a pretty good piece. <laughs>